everyone! Welcome back! Last week we had a beautiful wedding to attend and being the girly girl that I am, I actually planned a whole pampering week to get ready for it. I pictured my look, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with my makeup, my hair, even the bronze of my skin was planned, so I thought it would be really useful to share with you this sort of checklist that I did to get ready to a special event. I feel like it's so rare that we have this type of occasion to really put our efforts into and actually come up with a full-on very high glam look. So I really want to take advantage of this and I thought I'd share it with you. First thing that I started thinking about and planning for was bronzing. Now I am very new to self-tanning. If you watched my Brazil vlog, you will have seen that I self-tan for the first time ever for a wedding. And I have to say that the final result wasn't ideal. I did get a few streaks, a few splots, a few weird marks that fortunately were covered by the dress that I was wearing, but the whole point of self-tanning is to look natural, glowing from within. So this time I really did my research and I just studied the whole technique of self-tanning. Well, isn't it completely hilarious that I am here talking to you about how to self-tan while I have my neck and my chest in completely different shades of bronze? completely ignore any tips that I have for you because I clearly do not know what I'm doing. And came to the conclusion that the first step and the most essential one is to exfoliate your skin. I did this with two methods, one that is physical and the other one that is chemical. I started exfoliating about three days before I was actually going to apply the self-tanning lotion and that assured that I would have a blank canvas for applying bronzing products. So first product that I went for were these little exfoliating gloves from Brushworks. And it's really, really easy to use. You just have to apply your shower gel or the soap that you usually use. And the glove will kind of act almost as a file to your body and get rid of any dead skin, any weird textures, so that the bronzing product will apply evenly. And then alongside that, I applied this AHA moisturizer from Frank Body. AHA is a chemical exfoliant that helps again with lifting that dead skin and resurfacing it. So when I applied my bronzing mousse, I was really just squeaky clean, no dead skin, no flakiness, ready to go. And then on the day of application, I just took a shower, didn't apply anything to my body, no moisturizers, no sprays, no deodorant, and then I just applied the product. I think that if you are doing this for the first time, you should get yourself a product that you can see. Because the fact that this is a see-through water does not really make clear where you applied it and where you didn't. So if I could teach you anything from this video is get yourself those tanning mousses or lotions that you can actually see where you applied. I also tested out the Tan Lux face drops. This is also a bronzing solution that you actually mix with skincare products and it will add that glowiness, that bronziness to your face, but in a more natural way, which is exactly what I like. I also love the look of bronze skin because, at least for me, it requires less foundation, less products to give life to my face. So I really wanted to try this out. I basically took a little bit of my Shiseido cream, added a few drops of the Tan Lux, mix it up, and applied it to my face evenly, making sure that I got the roots of my hair, my ears, behind my ears, and the next day I woke up with a beautiful glow. For my hair, since I have managed to grow it out a little bit, I decided to go for a low bun. My dress had a sort of opening on the back, so I really wanted to showcase that. And also my dress had long sleeves, and I'm not a huge fan of 
wearing long sleeves with your hair down i think that with your hair up it looks a lot more polished in terms of makeup i know there are a lot of very talented professionals out there but i like doing my own makeup for special events because i've had a few traumatizing experiences in the past where makeup artists just had a very heavy hand and i ended up spending the night not feeling like myself feeling like i had a mask on feeling like i just looked like a little clown so i have learned my lesson and until i find a professional that i really really trust hopefully that'll happen someday until then i will do it myself since my dress was this beautiful shade of leaf green it was just the color block of leaf green i wanted the eyes to be kind of bronzy coppery smoky but not too much just to complement the color of the dress and of course for an event like this i like to go all out so just adding contour highlighting beautiful lashes the whole shebang i think it's so fun to do your makeup for special events different from day to day even if that just means the addition of a little bit of glitter or a brighter lipstick if you don't feel comfortable with that of course wear whatever you want but i like to take advantage of these moments to feel extra glamorous i started by doing my eye makeup just to avoid any fallout that i wouldn't be able to clean up afterwards i used the very iconic yet a little forgotten by social media in general biba palette by natasha denona i think this is such a beautiful palette especially for events like this it has natural looking colors so it's not the colors of the rainbow they are still classic nudes browns shimmers but they do have a depth and an intensity to them so it's really fun to play around i just used a bunch of different colors from it did a little bit of a smoky bronzy look then i added some eyeliner from nyx this is an amazing eyeliner because it's very very thin and very very pigmented and i just used it to give a little bit of structure to my more blown out look then i applied a little bit of mascara Cara from Rare Beauty and moved on to the face. The foundation that I'm wearing on this video is my favorite one at the moment and I think it is being discontinued. It's from Shiseido. It has a lot of skincare ingredients to it, which I love because it treats your skin as well as giving you a uniform coverage but i have heard that they have the synchro skin foundation that is very similar to this one i will link everything that i'm using below and if they are not available anymore something that i've heard is a dupe i used this concealer from benefit to add a little bit of brightness in my under eyes and in the center of my face applied some bronzer from the shade and illuminate palette by tom ford which is a classic i know a lot of people say it is overpriced and it but the shade of it for my skin tone especially when i'm bronzed is perfect because not only does it add warmth to my face but it also adds a little bit of sculpting and contouring so i really love it to set a little bit of my makeup i used this nyx powder that is called the no filter finishing powder i love how this product still gives you some natural glow of skin looking texture avoiding that dried tired cakey look that i particularly hate for blush i wore two shades from inglot one that is more of a rosy mauvey nudie tone that is great to blend a brighter blush with a bronzer it is in color 127 then i use color 27 which is more of a true pink that really complements a more bronzed skin so i love mixing these two blushes i think they are very very beautiful on a lot of skin tones then moving on to highlighter now highlighter for me on day to day i like to be very discreet almost like a sheen of silky glow nothing too shabam but for a special occasion i do like to go all out and in this case i first apply a layer of the shade and illuminate illuminator from the palette from tom ford and just to add another volt of luminosity i applied this wet and wild highlighter that is just 
see it from outer space beautifully illuminated for the lips i used my favorite lip liner from kiko milano and then applied a beautiful nude lipstick over it and this was my makeup look so very bronzy very illuminated very fresh very summery and great for looking healthy and beautiful on pictures and video and to finish everything off the piece de resistance the dress I don't know how it is in other places in the world, but in Brazil, we like to bring out the big guns when it comes to dressing for weddings. In fact, I am very curious about this. How is it in your country? What is the tradition where you live? Do you go all out like us Brazilians or are things a little bit more simple, understated, discreet? Let me know in the comments below. As I said before, I opted for this green long dress in a beautiful silk. And if you look at it from afar, it looks very discreet and conservative because it is long, it has the longer sleeves, but in movement, it really has a little zhuzh to it. First, because of the slit, it's quite a high slit, which I'm not accustomed to, but for a special occasion, I think it's absolutely fine. And then on the back, as I mentioned before, there is also an opening. So that balance between the long sleeves, then the slit, then the detail in the back, I think gives a very nice harmony to a dress. It's not trying too hard, it's not too revealing, it's not too sexy, it's not trying to steal attention from the bride but it's still detailed and interesting. To balance out that sultry slit, I went for sandals that were a little bit more romantic and subdued. So I went with these ones from Zara, which I got thousands of years ago, but it's still one of my favorites. And then to finish up the look, other than the delicate pair of sandals, I went for a pearl clutch. It is completely covered in pearls. I love how it also adds that more classic element. So you're not just going for sexy va va voom, you're sort of counterbalancing it with the accessories. And I also wore some beautiful pendant earrings that had pearls in them. This is it, everyone. This is how I got ready. Now, I didn't show a lot of the wedding itself on this video just because for privacy reasons, people don't know I'm doing this, so it would be weird if I was there with my camera just filming everyone around me. But hopefully you managed to get an idea of how I like to get dressed for this type of occasion and maybe I inspired you to do the same. Again, let me know down in the comments what are some traditions about wedding and wedding guests in your countries. There are so many of you in so many different parts of the world and this is a subject that is so varied in different regions. So please let me know, I'm very curious and we'll see each other again next time. Bye.